Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Also, anybody who's here for the first time, great that you'd stop by. I appreciate having you here. For a while now, I've been watching my bebés grow, and they have done the best ever since I got them two years ago. They stagnated, they did nothing, and then this year, suddenly, they all came to life. So you can see how bad their little pots have gotten. Very black, very nasty looking. You can hardly recognize that there's ceramics in there. But what, you, what I can see is how many roots have grown into these pots. And I believe that now is the time to get them into bigger pots, with the exception of one. My Leopoldia here crossed with Sky Dreams has only just, just started to show that it is ready and acclimatized and is ready to come onto its own. This is a new growth grown just recently. So what I'm going to do is clean up the ceramics, give it some fresh stuff and put it back in the same pot. But the other ones I believe are ready to go up a notch and be there for several years. So let's have a look. If you like, stick with me and let's have a look how I clean them up and get them into the new environment. I'm going to start with the smallest one first because I think that when it grows new roots, it does not need to be in this nasty environment here. I want it to get going with new roots in a comfortable, comfortable, fresh setup. Let's see if anything has deteriorated in there because that new growth has not grown any new roots yet to my understanding oh but I'm wrong no it's not the new growth it's the older growth that has wow I'm gonna need this pot again wow this is cool the one big root has actually branched. Incredible, look. Wow, look at that. This is one root that actually went nuts and branched. That's great to see. And this is the new growth that is also pushing out another new growth. Or is that a root? That's a possibly a new growth, but it hasn't done anything on the root front. So I'm going to take care of this right now, clean up that pot and just toss it into some fresh ceramics. That's better. Now I'm not one to be worried about algae around roots. For me, it's an aesthetical thing, but I will spray them down with a little bit of hydrogen peroxide because there was some decayed algae in there. So I'm just gonna give them some hydrogen peroxide just to not compound the problem too soon. So that's that. Let's just make sure that we get the depth right. And that looks good. Nothing needs chopping off here. That's great. That's the two new growths. So I'm just trying to check whether I should just put a little bit on the bottom of the reservoir before putting the roots on top. And that's my only uncertainty now. I thought they had grown in, but they don't look like they had. So I'm going to just do half and half. Put a little bit of ceramics on the bottom. And then some of the roots will be in the reservoir, but not entirely. So when it comes to potting up, I always consider the back where my holes are, the back of the pot, because when they're on my shelf, I do try to place them with the back and the prettier side to the front, depending on how they are in the direction of the light. But for example, in winter, they're all under lead light, so I can place them any way I want, so they always face me with the pretty side. 
and then we just fill her up. And then I just take a little grip of my orchid in the not most vulnerable parts, squeeze so that the media can fill up around the roots as evenly as possible and raise her up just a teeny bit. And by squeezing, I'm not yanking on the roots, there's an easier give, it's more of a relaxed motion. And that's going to be it for Cattleya Leopoldii, crossed with Sky Dreams. I also put the tag in the location of where the holes are, so that I always know that's where they are when it comes to carrying them. Then I can tilt them towards me and I never spill anything when I lift them out of the shelf. Then we're just going to fill them up with some regular RO water. Before I actually am doing all this, I've had already given them a lot of uh, fertilizer for in their reservoir. So in all these reservoirs for the past week, they've had 300 ppm, of which 100 is calcium nitrate, and I have 200 of MSU fertilizer. So what they're getting now, because I'm also treating with hydrogen peroxide, is just RO water at 6.3 pH. That's one. Let's see about the other ones. I believe that I'm going to be able to go up to a 14 centimeter pot now, where they can then live for the next two years, three years, if not more. But from what I see on the root system, I believe I can go up a notch. So this one is Cattleya Moonbells. See I got them on eBay from Cattleya Blue. Great plants. I tried the deflasking with this company. That was my first ever attempt and they didn't make it. To my horror, I couldn't leave them in the flask as long as I should have because when they arrived, they were all jumbled up and the agar was all over the foliage. So I had to I have to admit defeat there, and I don't know if I'm gonna try flasking again. So this one can stay nasty because I'm definitely, definitely bumping this beautiful little baby into a bigger pot. Look at this. All right, and I'm telling you, with the exception of one root, if I can find it, I'm not entirely sure, but I had one biggish root to work with last year. And look, this year they have just taken off. That makes me very happy. Now, I don't mind having moss growing in my media. I really don't mind, but I do try to keep it away from the stem as best as I can. The moss actually helps me with humidity around the root system. Got to wipe the hands. I have my bleach water in the back here, but I want that to stay clean as well so that I don't put nasties into that water before I touch the next one. And we're just going to spray some hydrogen peroxide on it just to keep the internal nasty away for as long as possible in the new pot. Then the next one that we can unpot, because now we're going into a line, a conveyor line, is the Cattleya Meliana Andreasen, which is an Eximia crossed with Blue Princess. So that should be interesting. You see a pattern here. Yes, the company on eBay is called Cattleya Blue. 
So there is, there's that. There's a reason for that. Okay. We have some compromised roots and there's two seedlings in here. Oh, but we have some beauties as well. So not concerned. Now being inorganic media, I shouldn't be needing to pick all of this off, but there is a lot of surface moss, a lot, and a bit too much for my liking. We are going into the hottest months, but with a root system like this, this moss needs to be contained just a little bit. It's going and climbing up the, towards the base of the rhizome, and I don't want that. Otherwise, I wouldn't mind the ceramist just staying where it is. Yep, I got two gorgeous ones in here. I will not, do I separate them? No, I will not separate them. I know them how they are like this. Wow, check this out. I have tweezers, but I don't need them. Not at this stage. There's enough of a gap in there. Look at this. Look at this. So this is Catlin Meliana Andreasen, Eximia crossed with Blue Princess. At least I have some crosses here. I don't have them on all of my babies, but look, here's some not so good roots. But look at the new roots this year. This is all this year's root growth, all this. These were not here last year. Nothing really was here last year, except the ones that have died off like this one. But isn't this amazing? Look at the size of them. Oh, that gives me hope. That gives me hope, and that's why they're going into a bigger pot now. Judging by what I'm seeing here, this can graduate to Lekka. I will definitely baby some of the roots in the media and mix Ceramis in and around some of the roots, but this one is going into Lekka and Ceramis, taking it up a notch. There you go. And then, steering away from the Cattleyas, I've got the pa Lelia Pacavia, the one that has Veitch 1901 on its label. But all that means is that a certain Mr. Veitch found it. Whoa! Oh, this pot is tight. Okay. Gentle and easy does it. Maybe I need a bigger pot for this one, even bigger than the 14 centimeter one. Yeah, this pot feels tight. So this is great. This came in a pot. There's like four of these Lelias in one pot, two of which were pretty much quite large and established and two of which were so small they didn't go into the bigger pot. All right. This is high noon. I guess we had a busy spring on the algae front. I, don't, I didn't expect to have to do this until next year. But I'm glad that I can because I've got the supplies. There's no reason that the roots should have to deal with these kind of conditions when they can do without. And this is only because my little cups are transparent. The hydrogen peroxide will kill off quite a bit of this organic matter and will be A-OK -okay with all the flushing. So there's two in here, and they've done really well this year. Very pleased, very encouraging. The big ones are doing well as well. I've had two new growths on the big one already, and now they're coming up with two more new growths in one season, so that's awesome. Okay, I'm not going to fuss with this too much. I'm just gonna clean my hands. 
and show you. What a difference, I could feel it as soon as I was trying to squeeze the pot. It was much harder, much more resistance in the pot. So each seedling has had two new growths this year, but the root system has gone mental. And that's what it's all about. Love it. While I wait for the snippers to evaporate the alcohol, I just go ahead and spray in the hydrogen peroxide. So for the next week, they will just be living off the reservoir that I'm putting into them. No fertilizer, just plain RO water and flushing. I had a question about my labels and if the sticker comes off or fades because it's in the wet environment, look, I'm just cleaning off the label, but you can see there's nothing wrong with a sticker at all. And it's been in there for years. It's not peeling off, not unraveling or anything. Okay, moon bells, you're up. Into your new home you go. I'm just going to make my wicking loop here. Not much. Not much at all. I don't want to be squashing these roots. And if that is too much already on the base, because the cups were taller than these pots are, then the roots get priority. There's a clear back and front. Let me just honor that in keeping her back. There's also two in here, I think. No, one on a very weak rhizome. I have a bit of resistance down here. Let me just free that up. There we go. So now I'm thinking all ceramis, all leka, the bottom leka, then ceramis, top leka. That's how we're going to do it. The reasoning being the bulk of the roots are in the middle and they are used to ceramis. So that's where I'm going to baby them with what they know. I just want to make sure it doesn't rise out of the pot because this looks like a little, just not a big climber, but I can see there are tendencies. So maybe I can tease it a little bit at an angle like this. There we go. So as I'm doing that, I'm trying to get the ceramics to fill in the gaps in between the roots because that's the environment that it's used to. In the meantime, shaking up some of the leka. But that's okay, as long as the roots are basically surrounded down there like they know, we will be fine. This is a big step for my babies. It's graduation day. <laughs> all right, I don't want to do the jiggling with the label and all that. So my label goes in first before I finish everything else. There we go. So I filtered out a few of my smaller pebbles so that I don't have all the big chunks on the top. When new roots grow, they should get into the pot with the least amount of resistance. So just one more handful around the top. And this way I can also monitor if the roots are going to grow out and don't want to go into the media. I can pick off the top layer and then work around that as well. Raise or lower 
as necessary the seedling. Now, I don't want to do that. I have kept her a tad lower in the pot so that I can add, if I need to, ceramic microfiber to keep the top with a nice environment for any new roots. There we go. So Megan, if you are watching this, we did have a little chit chat about roots and seedlings of cattleyas. As you can see, I have ceramics, but if you take only the small pebbles of your leka that are like this size, then that'll do just fine as well. Because my ceramics, in comparison, isn't much bigger. So I hope that this video serves two purposes. I didn't realize that I had anything to repot on my seedling front simply because I wasn't expecting to see so much algae this year. But hey, you fertilize them a lot. Where there's fertilizer, there's algae. So little one, I hope that you're going to do well here. Let's get Meliana Andreasen situated. Now, because I have ceramics for the bottom, I'm not sifting out the big lecker. If I didn't have ceramics, then before doing the repotting, up potting, I would actually be using only small lecker. New growth action going in this direction, new growth growth action going in this direction. So they're facing each other. All right. That means that this will be a good position for them in the pot. That is what we assume. And then suddenly they do something and go in the opposite direction. Like I've seen with my Sologeny Lime Bay. So again, into the middle where the roots are most accustomed to ceramics, they will get their ceramics. And I'm going to fill with lecker. Okay. Now, this looks a bit funky. The back is all filled with lecker because there's quite a number of very, very nice roots there that I want to protect from drying out. The front still has like a hollow to it because as these growths mature and then bring out new growths, I am hoping that I can then, with the new roots, fill them up and protect them from it drying out. There we go. You see, with Lekka, it's so much easier to put tags in. That's why when it comes to ceramics or lava rock, I prefer to put my tags in halfway through so I'm not jostling around too much. And lastly, we've got Pacavia. Loving, loving the progress on this one. Absolutely loving it. I'm just going to fill around with Lekka. Because that's her permanent home will be Lekka. The bigger Lelia Pacavia is doing fabulous in Lekka. So Lekka it is and not the small stuff. This one's graduating all the way. I still need to fill out a little bit around the top here. And for that, I will use small lecker. There we go. This should be perfect for it now for the next two years. And that's what I said at the beginning of spring when I did my bebe's video. I won't have to worry because now this, that, and the other. They were drinking up these little reservoirs now very quickly. I almost missed the mark a couple of times. Because I do, I spray them every morning, so I did get away with having the reservoir dry out because every morning they just went with my spray gun, you know, and so they were always moist. But the reservoirs were dry and drier than I actually expected them to. So bumping them up is great. Now I'm expecting another two years. The growths have space to develop, but if they keep up like this, with the root actions, then in two years, we'll be back. 
or maybe sooner, but I, I doubt it. I think this is going to be just fine for them for the next two years. So these are my little babies. They are not juveniles yet. Once upon a time, I did a juvenile video. And just because they are in bigger pots now, I still believe that these are definitely seedlings. No way, no how are these juveniles just yet. But we're getting there. We're getting some nice size jump. We saw some fabulous root growth that I hadn't had in year one. So everything is looking positive. If we can just, if I can just keep them away from any harm, pests, etc., we're going to be good to go. There's a few to give away. Thank you, everybody, for sticking by me, for watching. I really appreciate it. Everybody that has any questions whatsoever, you know the drill. If you're new here, I am open, I am approachable, ask away. There is no such a thing in my world as a dumb question. So please, if I didn't qualify something, if you have additional considerations, I'm open to that as well. And I look forward to hearing from you and seeing you next time. Take care, everybody. Bye.